Yeah. You know, everyone here had a hard time getting up today, too. So we know how you feel. Well, my name is Mrs. Fearball, and I love to be in classrooms with children. And I especially love sharing books with children. Today we have something very special planned for you. You're going to hear a story about a little toad named Toto. And I'm sure you may have already heard about Toto and his friends from your teacher. The name of this book is A Huge Lesson for Toto and Friends. The special part today is that you're going to get to hear the story read by the author. Do you remember who an author is? What does an author do? Teachers, could you just call on someone? They write the book. Good for you. Lots of you knew that answer. The person who wrote the book, and she's right here with us, Miss Linda. She's going to tell you about Toto and his friends, where they live, and about the illustrator. Remember, the illustrator is the person who drew the pictures. And as she reads the story to you, I want you to listen very, very carefully and for the lesson and think about what Toto and his friends learned in the pond on a hot summer day in Kansas. So I would like to present to you Miss Linda and a huge lesson for Toto and friends. Hello, I'm Miss Linda. This is the pond setting for Toto and friends. My illustrator is Lori Mills. She drew the pictures that are you'll see in the book, and I had children like you color each of the pictures. Some of them were, um, I had one lady, she was 76 years old, and one, I think three or four was the youngest I had color a picture in this book. Um, all of the characters are at a pond setting in Kansas. This is Toto. Um, the books are based after my own children when they were young. Toto is my son, after my son Todd, and we nicknamed him Toto. Uh, his little sister is a little pollywog. All of these are his best friends. This is Sally and Mandy. Buddy's his very best friend. Ick the inchworm. Um, Scout is a dragonfly. He kind of stutters sometimes when he gets nervous. And then behind me is Lucky. Um, he's a little tattletale goldfish. And the book I'm going to read is a huge lesson for Toto and friends. Toto and his friends are good kids. They usually know do the right thing. Sometimes they they make mistakes, and the wise old turtle turtle will help them out and help them figure out the right thing to do. So the story begins at a pond. It was another hot summer day. Toto and his friends were at the pond playing with an old fishing bobber they had found. The friends were taking turns sitting on the bobber while another spun them around. It was Sally the salamander's turn. As she spun around with her eyes closed, the bobber accidentally floated next to Mrs. Codger's place. Mrs. Codger was an eccentric old codfish. She became withdrawn and grouchy after losing her husband in a fishing accident several years ago. She took up collecting pull taps from soda cans the humans would throw into the water. No one knew why or dared to ask. Mrs. Codger screamed at the sight of the bobber. Sally's eyes popped wide open. Poor Sally jumped higher than anyone had ever seen and fell into the water with a large splash. The startled little salamander was swimming for shore while Mrs. Codger was yelling for her to come and get this bobber out of her sight. Toto and Buddy were rolling with laughter as Sally pulled herself out of the water. Her drenched bow covered her eyes as she stomped over to her friends. Lucky was laughing so hard he was blowing bubbles in the water. Scout could hardly stay airborne. He was laughing his funny little cackle. Sally wrung out her bow, stomped off, and said, I'm never playing with you again. The wide-eyed friends shrugged as they waved goodbye. 
They waited for the bobber to float back and continued playing. From across the pond, the friends could hear lots of laughter and splashing. The curious friends decided to check it out. It was Toto who leaped into the water to lead the way across the pond, while Buddy and Scout flew overhead. When the group arrived, they saw a new family of frogs had moved in. The frogs were all splashing and swimming at the pond's edge. There were five young frogs, and they all welcomed Toto and his friends. The newcomers had just moved from a quiet community called Savart. Come and play, shouted several of the frogs in the water. What are you playing, asked Buddy. The frogs explained how they would find a large pebble at the water's edge. Each one would then hold their breath and walk out into the water as far as they could. After letting go of the pebble, they would quickly pop to the top of the water like a bobber. As each of the frogs got out of the water and took their turn, it was the last frog named Sherubi that made Toto and his friends stare with their mouths and eyes wide open. There in front of them was the fattest frog they had ever seen. Oh my, said Polly, I won't ever call Toto fat again. Wow, said Lucky, what a whopper frog. She could dress up as a whale for Halloween, laughed Buddy. She could be Shamu the killer frog, said Mandy. Shh, said Toto, she'll hear you. But it was already too late. All the frogs heard them. Sherubi hung her head as she kicked a pebble. The flat pebble whizzed just past Polly, almost hitting her. Hey, yelled Toto, that's my sister. She's not only fat, said Scout, she's mean too. She's not mean, said one frog, you are. Go home, shouted all the frogs. Well, so long to you too, yelled Toto. Hope you have a whale of a good day, yelled Buddy as everyone laughed and waved goodbye. I mean a humongous one, laughed Scout. Quit it, you guys, said Toto, as they all went back to the other side of the pond. The pond friends were laughing and still talking about the fat little frog when they reached the other side. What is so funny? asked a deep, calm voice. Everyone stopped. There on the bank was Captain Snap the wisest old turtle in the whole world, according to Toto and his friends. He was also the oldest resident at the pond. It was said that Captain Snap knew everyone in the area, even before they were born. Well, said Toto, and he began telling Captain Snap about the fat little frog named Sherubi. What do you think, Toto? asked the wise old turtle. I think we shouldn't have made fun of her so she could hear us. I think it hurt her feelings, said Toto. Hurt her feelings, asked Buddy. She almost hurt your sister. I saw a tear in her eyes, said Polly. I think she was hurt. I think she kicked the rock because she was angry. Polly, said Captain Snap, you are a wise little pollywog. Why do you think her friends were playing with her, he asked. Because they like her, said Mandy. When you like someone, it doesn't matter how big they are or what they look like. Yeah, laughed Betty. We love Scout and he's ugly. Everyone laughed. The wise turtle continued. Do fat people and ugly people have feelings like you do? Of course, said Toto. That's why I was trying to make everyone talk so quiet so she couldn't hear. Why say anything at all so anyone could hear, asked Captain Snap. If she is same on the inside as you and I, then why not see her and get to know her like her friends have? What wonderful friends she must have to try to protect her from hurtful comments. The little pond friends hung their head. It was they who had hurt someone with their words and brought them to tears. The other little frogs now thought Toto and his friends were thoughtless and rude and not worth playing with. The friends decided to go back over to the little frogs and try again. So what have you learned, reviewed the wise old turtle. If you can't say something nice about someone, don't say it at all, they all sang out together. Accept people the way they are, added Toto. You have learned well, said Captain Snap. Now go and make amends. <coughs> When the five little frogs saw Toto and his friends approaching, they started to get out of the water. Toto stepped up first. We're sorry we were so thoughtless. Can you forgive us? asked Toto. Let's start over and play together, added Buddy. 
We would like to show you around the pond, Polly said as she swam next. 